I'm Dr. Brad Hafford, archaeologist at the University of Pennsylvania and field director at the ancient city of Ur. At the moment, I am quite a ways from the ziggurat. You can see it in the background. We are in the domestic area just behind what Leonard Woolley called Area A-H. So we're in his area in H, and we're at the edge of a very deep trench just down here. Well, this trench was begun in 2015, continued in 17, 19, and now we've done a little bit of work down there. But it's so deep that we have to close it out. We're going to backfill the whole thing to make sure that a giant hole doesn't remain here. So I thought I would document it and tell something about the complexity of digging a site that's been inhabited for 5,000 years and then abandoned for another 2,500 or so. It means that people have lived on top of the remains of the previous people. And so sorting all of this out can be very difficult. You'll see it as we go down into the trench. I'm going to keep the camera as steady as I can. But you'll see that, first of all, it can get dangerous on these stairs. They're covered with the soil, which is very dusty here on the top. So that's why I cut the staircase so wide, so that we would be able to avoid falls. But we have to clean it every now and then in order to get rid of the more slippery dirt. So now that I'm down in here, I should put on a hard hat for some safety reasons. There is a chance that a few potsherds or something will fall out of the bulk. We have found that the bulks are very stable because of the clay-like soil. We've also sloped them a bit. It started out as a 10 by 10. It's now about an 8 and a half by 8 and a half down at the bottom. So there is a bit of slope and we have had no problems with falling things, but we need to make sure that we're as safe as possible. So up there, maybe for the first meter, meter and a half, we've got foundations of the Neo-Babylonian, but the floor levels were very close to surface. In fact, erosion has taken away the majority of the latest periods of occupation, which were Neo-Babylonian and Persian. Those have largely been washed off of the tell. We started digging here because there was the best preservation of that late material, but we wanted to go down below it, so we went through their courtyard zone. Now the next wall's up there. There's only slight remains. You can see some in this corner as well. Let's see if I can accurately point to them. No. <laughs> right up in there. That is probably Issun II. We don't have really good dates on them, but Issun II is roughly 1100 BCE. So we had a kind of scrappy building of that period. It wasn't terrible, but it was using reused bricks from the old Babylonian period. The Kassites did that as well. So the small three-course wall that's above this big wall, that's Kassite. They roughly 1400, 1300 BCE, and they too were digging up the old Babylonian bricks and making their own walls with them. Well, Or saw maybe its biggest period, the densest population at least, in the old Babylonian, and that's represented by this very large baked brick wall here. So the wealth of Ur had grown greatly, and they could expend the energy and time to build these very large domestic buildings. This is just a house, and yet it has many courses of the baked brick. Let's get a somewhat more interesting position if we can. The problem is that we've already started putting dirt into the area behind this wall, so it's hard to see. But what we have on the wall is the bottom three courses stick out a little bit from the wall, and that is the foundation. So they would have dug down to make sure they had a stable wall and put in three courses below their floor levels. But there were four floor levels here above that. So a lot of occupation in the old Babylonian. They resurfaced four times, so they were living here for a long time. But beneath that, and you can see where these, these mud walls stop, that's the level of the floor from the old Babylonians. So they cut on the top of the mud wall, and the people living below that had already gone away, and this building was largely destroyed at that time, so they cut it down. But this building, we thought it must be Ur III because it sits below the old Babylonian. 
or the Asin Larsa, which is the early portion before the real old Babylonian came around. The best known of that would be Hammurabi. He was king starting about 1792, but the building behind me was probably built around 1850, so earlier than Hammurabi. This one, whenever Woolley found mud walls beneath baked brick, he said they were Ur-3. And that's what we were looking for. We wanted to expose an Ur-3 house. So we were excited. We found this wall. But in fact, the wall is a very odd construction. You don't see any bricks in it here. You will see that the foundation down here is made of baked bricks. So they had three courses of baked bricks. And then they built with mud atop that. And it's not mud brick. You can see that there are all sorts of things like potsherds showing up inside the mud matrix. A lot of it. Why? Well, because this is a construction we call tof. Sometimes we use the word pisse. It's just packed mud. So they would start with their foundation, and then they would lay down a reed mat. And there's a probability that we can see one of those reed mat lines right in here. So that's just above the foundation. Then they would pack mud for about 30 centimeters and put another reed mat down. Don't see, here's another line up here of a reed mat. So they would let that dry, lay, put down another reed mat, put more wet mud, pack it in to make a wall. It's not a common method at this time period. We found that there were some or three tablets not in the building itself. In fact, the building had been cut by a very large trash pit from the old Babylonians. It had cut down into the majority of the building, and we were allowed to remove some of the tof walls in order to try to get beneath that. Beneath it, we found Ur-3 and a few early Isin tablets. So the kings of Isin began this period that we call Isin Larsa Old Babylonian after, well, sometime after 2000 when the Ur-3 collapsed, Isin becomes primary. So we get the early Isin kings, then we get the Larsa kings, then we get Babylon ruling as the preeminent culture. Well, the people of Ur, along with other cities from the south, were not so happy about being ruled from Babylon. And they started a rebellion. That was really rebelling against Hammurabi, but his son, Samsu Aluna, had had enough of it, and he sent his armies down here in his 11th regnal year to destroy the walls of Ur. That's how they kept their time, basically, was by year names. So it would be this king in a particular year, and they would give a name to the year. In the 11th year of Samsu Aluna, the name of the year is the year in which Samsu Aluna destroyed the walls of Ur and Uruk. Now that is what precipitated the depopulation at Ur. When he destroyed the city wall, People left the city, and he may have done some damage to a lot of the other buildings. We do get some burning at the tops of some of the old Babylonian. But just how extensive that destruction was is hard to know, and yet it seems to have led to abandonment for a very long time. Well, the Ur-3 was also destroyed. The Ur-3 city came down around 2000 BCE, and there were many literary tales of this destruction called the Lamentation over the Destruction of Ur. And they talk about just how horrible it was. The god had left the city and therefore the hordes of Elamites and others came in to take over and destroy the city. Well, that destruction has puzzled me. You know, how complete was it? How big was Ur in that time period? Ur was the seat of the kings and so you would think that there would be a lot of houses. And yet, we don't really have any completely excavated or three houses. Well, that's why we were excited when we got this potential one, and it turned out that in fact it's just after the or three period, and we know that because the floor levels of the building that was built of tof were above the tablets that we got. So the floor levels of that building are up in this striation. There were three, and you can see a little bit of the foundation of the wall there beneath that. We got a number of Ur-3 tablets, but there were three that were early Isin, the kings uh, Ishmael Dagon, and there was a cylinder seal of a servant of Idin Dagon. So this is fairly early in the Isin period, 
it's showing that the building dates probably 1950 BCE, and we were looking for the period between 2100 and 2000. So we hadn't reached it yet. And we had to close out the 2019 season. We were digging deeper to try to see if we had any O3 architecture. So that's what we wanted to know this season. And we decided, well, it's just so deep, we can't dig a lot. We're going to do just a small amount of work, and we're going to dig a small trench at the very bottom. Well, what we have found is a, a wall down here, and you can see that I still have our first indication of the wall is still covered with a sack, <laughs> and I can remove that to show you how we first came across the wall. These things can be very hard to see, and you can see just how complicated it is to disentangle the very many phases of living here. Well, what we have is on top of the wall one of these reed mats. So I have to get down here to show this white material is a very old impression of a reed mat. But when you first reveal this, you get the white color coming out very strongly. And that's because the reed was impressed between a layer of mud bricks, and that has helped it to stay preserved even though it's an organic material. When you come down on that, you know that you're, you've got part of a wall. And in this case, it's actually a mud brick wall. You can see some of the articulation of bricks there. You can see more bricks down below. So there's two phases to this wall. One is the upper phase that has the reed mat on it. And you can see the line of bricks. There's really only one course remaining. Then there's a layer, 20 centimeters or so, of packed earth. And then another set of bricks a little bit farther out. You can also see that the reed mat itself has sloped pretty badly. That tends to indicate that this wall was pushed down or fell down on its own. So we seem to have a lot of destruction layers here. We've got various ash. You can see a lot of ash in the bulk here. Indications of burning, etc. Probably some roof fall in there that might be burned. I would hesitate to say that this is the Ur 3 destruction, but this is an Ur 3 building. We found nothing later than Ur 3. We had an Ur 3 tablet above this wall in the collapse, so we found a whole lot of mud bricks scattered all over here because the wall came down. It was, it was destroyed, but of course, when you're going to rebuild, you're going to push in a building anyway. In order to build on top of it, you have to push down the walls, level them off, and put your own walls up. So this doesn't mean that it was destruction from invading hordes or whatever. We did find, however, up in that rubble, uh, an arrowhead, bronze arrowhead, that uh, it does match up with some Elamite stuff. We also found a sling bullet in the doorway. Now, that, again, doesn't tell us that this is a battle or a destruction. It's very little evidence, but it's possible. Here's my biggest problem, though, with that being the end of the Ur-3, and that is that beneath this tof wall, we have a few other bricks right in here. It's really just one line. There's occasionally part of a second course, and it goes up to a door socket over there, and then it just disappears. So what we have is the remains of the very bottom of a building. And this is kind of sloped and then it disappears out there. This is beneath the Issen building. Not too far, 30 centimeters maybe. So this one should be Ur-3. Maybe this is a later phase of Ur-3 than the one that we have down there. So if that's still in the period Ur-3, this thing has to be early or three, or possibly late Akkadian. Now we find a lot of pottery, but the pottery itself is not all that distinctive between the periods. So late Akkadian, or three, and early Issen all have very similar pottery. Just because the politics are changing doesn't mean the people have just changed their style of making things. So that hasn't helped us a whole lot, and we haven't gotten any texts right down on the floor. We had the one up above. Just quickly to show in the profile here, there is a potsherd. This is a rim of a carinated rim bowl, 
very common in the Ur 3, but it's also found in the late Akkadian and the early Isin. So there's a lot of complications here, very difficult to understand. I wanted to say just how much detail and how difficult it can be to disentangle what happened in places like this. Not only have people been building, but they've also been digging pits down into the earlier levels. That makes it harder to figure out the walls. Often those pits are to bury their dead. We do have still remaining in here uh, a couple of indications of burials. One is right down here. That's the edge of a clay larnax. And there's another right over here. So those came from the Issen building above. People would actually bury their dead inside their houses. They'd dig a pit down and place the body inside. We're digging a tell that stands 12 to 14 meters above the plain, and then there is more habitation below the current plain. So occupation from roughly 5500 BCE up until 500, probably up until about 300 BCE. So that's a very long time, and very many people lived and worked here, laughed and played, and that's what we're trying to understand. Well, I hope you enjoyed this tour. I'm Brad Hafford. Tune in again next time on Artifactually Speaking. <laughs>